Thank you, appreciate it. So, um, so like you said, my name is Dr. Lopez. Um, I'm at Summit Chiropractic and Sports Institute. There's another Summit Chiropractic and he's in Coeur d'Alene, so I try to kind of differentiate the two, um, different techniques. But, uh, so I'm a sports guy. Um, I do a lot with a couple of the local, um, local teams here, a couple of the high schools, Eastern Washington University. Um, I, I'm also one of the chiropractors for Team USA, for USA Track and Field. So I travel with the national team to different competitions. Um, and in my office, I try to take it into the holistic approach. Not just, you know, the chiropractic and the adjustment, but really there's a lot more than that. It's um, a lot of it is looking at the musculature, looking at the joint, looking at the nutrition side of it, looking at the exercise side of it. Chiropractic is great at getting mobility, but it's not really good at gaining strength. And so you have to have a balance of everything. And that's what we try to do at our office. It's a little bit of everything. So I have I have two girls that are at the front desk, um, and then I have an two ath an athletic trainer and an exercise therapist that helps me to do my rehab for me in the clinic, and then we have two massage therapists, which some of you guys here use, um, and uh, and we just try to do that. We try to do the whole the holistic approach. Um, now. Wade had asked us to come out and talk a little bit about nutrition. I, my nutritionist unfortunately couldn't make it, so you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit. <laughs> She's a lot more smarter than I am in regards to that. But anytime I do a presentation, I like to do it hands-on. Um, I hate going to seminars and all they do is talk, 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 and you get bored to death. Um, really, uh, what I like to do is a little bit more informative, things that you guys are gonna use and take with you after this, um, after this uh, presentation. So, we're gonna go ahead and work through this. So you guys have your pens, your pencils. So the first part that we're gonna calculate, so whenever, whenever, um, do you guys, anybody of you guys know what the basic metabolic rate is? Raise your hands if you know what that means. Yes, yes. So it's how fast your, how your body is using that, uh, your, your basically your food. That's basically what it means, how you're burning food throughout the day. And basic metabolic means that it's at rest. So throughout the day, if you're sitting, sleeping, you're burning calories. Your body needs those calories to give you energy so that you can continue to breathe, so you can continue to do movements and get you from one place to the next. You need that energy, and that comes from food. And so um, whatever we consume needs to be enough to allow us to go throughout our day. And so the basic metabolic rate is what we need in 24 hours to allow us to function. So we're gonna find that out first. What's your guys' individual metabolic rate so that you know how many calories you need a day to survive? Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. So the formula is pretty easy. So you're getting a little bit of the math here. So we're gonna do, for women, you have one, and for men, you have the one underneath that. So um, go ahead and calculate the parentheses first. If you guys forgot to do some math, parentheses first here. So um, figure that out and then raise your hands when you guys are done. So I kind of know when to continue. Dang. Math genius is over here. And some of you guys will be surprised how many calories you need in a day just to actually live. <laughs> and um, as you guys are doing that, so what happens is if we don't have, if we're not consuming enough of those calories throughout the day, then we got to get them from somewhere. Okay. Um, most of us have different activity levels. You know, some of us work out a little bit more. Some of us don't work out. So if we're not consuming those calories, either you're going to lose a lot of weight. Or, or what happens is that you will take it from another part of the body, which a lot of times comes from your muscle. And so you start wasting a little bit of muscle and that can lead to other issues. So. If 
If you guys need to convert height into inches, you probably have to use online. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the number, um, the number after the equal sign, like BMR equals six fifty five for the women and BMR equals sixty six for the men. Is that correct? Uh, that is actually no. It's six sixty. I believe. Let me check. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Where's my phone here? Yeah, it's. Is it sixty five? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Oh, because the men. Yeah, let me see. Because it's a little higher. Yeah, it, it is 66. It is right. Yeah, because you have a little bit of different um, calculations. Yeah. It is 66. What's that? So the woman is right. The woman is right and the guys is right. So 655 is for the women and then 66 is for the men. For the first part of that BMR equation. Hey Mike, what did you get for yours? Yeah, that's right. How many of you guys uh, have, are done? Raise your hands here. Okay, so that's a little bit there. Give you a few minutes here, and then we'll kind of continue. What's that? Is there one already in there? Yeah. It just depends. There's different ones. We're using the English one. There's uh, tons of them. This is the one research base that's a little bit more of the most uh, accurate. So that's the one that we use. Yeah. yeah. This, no, I'm just saying there's a calculator on the web. You can just enter your information. And then it puts it in? Cool. Same, I the same, same, same kind of concept. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. So we're going to continue a little bit here. So now that you have, so how many of you guys are a little surprised of what your number is? It's a little low. A little low? Okay. Okay. And sometimes, sometimes under the 2000, you know, um, but that's not doing anything. That's you standing there without moving. That's your basic. That's what you need to just, if you're laying down, to survive. Okay? So it's without any movement. Now, depending on your activity levels, it changes a little bit. And that's going to be the next calculation we're going to do. So how many of you guys work out quite a bit in here? Okay? So, um, and there's different workout levels. There's different, you have your endurance. If you guys are a runner, um, it's more of an endurance type of workout, okay, um, and that's a different one. There's a, there's a very active one, which is going to be a lot of endurance, a lot of uh, weights, okay, that's a different number. Um, sedentary is very little to hardly any exercise, you know, um, and then, uh, and that actually tells you right there, lightly active, maybe you exercise one or two days a week just for about 30 minutes or so, um, and then moderately active. You work out about three to five times a week, you know, maybe some weights. And then uh, very active is you exercise pretty hard, a lot of endurance, a lot of weightlifting, um, and things like that. So go ahead and plug in the numbers to that, and then you'll get another, another uh, reading there of how many calories you need. So that bumps them up a little bit more, right? Okay. So, I, I, how, raise your hand if you guys are done to see if I need to continue here. Okay. We'll give it one more minute and then we'll continue here. All right. So now that we have that number, does that shock anybody at all? Does I throw it off a little bit? Based on what you when you what was what was yours? 20, almost 2,700. Almost 2,700. Um, how much do you think you're consuming a day in calories? A little bit more than that. A little bit more than that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Depends on what you're doing. Okay. So if you want to lose weight with that number, whatever your activity one was, the second number you got, 
you either can drop 20% of that, and that's for weight loss. You're still getting enough energy, but you're also working on working uh, using your fat cells for energy. Because in any type of endurance workout or anything like that, the body's best cells to get energy from is fat. So if you decrease those 20% down, when you're working out, yes, you're gonna use a lot of your carbs, you're gonna use some of those energies, but if you, you have to be doing it for a longer distance. So like if you're walking, for instance, walking over like 45 minutes to an hour, then you start kicking in your endurance, and then that's when you start pulling the energy from the fat. But if you're running and sprinting, and you think you're gonna lose weight by running, you're not because it's not enough time. You have to run for a little bit of time in order for you to kick in that endurance cycle to allow you to use those fat cells to, to burn the fat. So what you do lose weight in is mostly water because of sweat that you're, that you're kind of releasing. And yes, you will lose a little bit of fat, but you're not gonna get a lot of the, a lot of like the cycle, the fat cycle, if, um, if you're only doing 20 minute runs. It needs longer than that. So it's better actually to lose weight to walk longer distances and you actually burn more fat than you do running for shorter distances. Most people don't really know that. And so, um, so uh, if you wanna gain weight, like maybe you wanna work out, bulk up a little bit, it's okay to go bump it up another 20% of what you're taking, which is kind of probably right around where you're at. The thing is, what kind of calories are you consuming that will help you gain that, right? Because that's the next step. So we have the basic equation of what we need, the number of calories you need to be able to survive. Now, depending on your activity level, we have another set of calorie numbers that we need to be able to um, either lose weight or either um, or either, uh, well, that you need to survive, but while you're working out, so you're not eating up your muscle, right? So then, um, so 20% down or 20% up, depending if you wanna lose weight or if you wanna gain weight. Now, now that you have those numbers, ooh, how do you eat, right? That's really, what type of calories do I need? That's the next question, right? Is now that you have the numbers, what am I gonna consume? When do I consume those, uh, Th those foods, because that matters um, what, what you're eating in the morning, midday, or afternoon. So a general rule, if you look down um, where it says uh, endurance and, an endurance athlete, an endurance athlete needs carbs immediately to be able to give them energy so they can go on that run, to give them, uh, to give them that energy, the, the abrupt energy, and then they start using their fat. But if you look at if you look at, uh, at an endurance athlete, at a long distance runner, how do they look? Are they big? They're usually really thin, right? And pretty muscular. Um, well, not, well they, they, you can see the muscles because they're really thin. That's pretty much it, you know? If they're like an ultra marathoner or a marathoner. So um, they need those carbs to allow them to get through that run immediately. And then they, so have you guys heard of carb loading? Like they start eating pasta the night before, or two nights before. It's actually better two nights before to allow the body to, for that to kick in. And then you use it. Um, so, uh, so that's the difference. You have to be able to know what type of exercise you're gonna do, to know what we call them macros. Your macros is your carbs, your proteins, and your fats. That's what our, that's what our food is made up of that we consume. So now we gotta distinguish what kind, how we're gonna break that down. So um, for an endurance athlete, it's gonna be a 60-20-20. 60% of their diet is gonna be carbs, 20% is gonna be fats, and 20 is gonna be proteins. Okay, that's how they're gonna break theirs down. Um, now to lose weight or to kinda, uh, to kinda gain more of a lean body mass, you're gonna do more of a 40-30. So 40 carbs, 30 proteins, 30 fats. Now you might be saying, why the heck am I bumping up my fats, right? That's an old wives tale when you say fats are bad for you. Not every fat is bad for you. We need fat to survive. Our brain is made up of fat. Our nerves are made up of fat. So they need, they need energy. 
So then um, we need to still feed that, but we gotta feed it the right type of fats. We can't keep, you know, I mean, any type, like your red meats are full of saturated fat, those things like that, that's a bad type of fat. Um, like your coconut oil, that's a good type of fat. Your avocados are a good type of fat. Um, so those kind of things are the ones that, um, that will help you. Now, if you got some questions about, like, you know, breaking that stuff down, Jolene, does an amazing job of breaking that down um, and she can help you guys you know um, but uh, on my side you know that's a, a, more, a lot of that stuff is kind of over my head a little bit you know because it, it does take a lot a lot of time and everybody's different even this calculation might vary on somebody you know in here um, it doesn't always fit for everybody but for the general population it works really well just to get a general idea um, but so so with that you know, um, a general rule, a general rule for, uh, for your intake of food. Okay, so knowing what carbs are, what are the good type of carbs according to the bad type of carbs. Have you heard of simple carbs and complex carbs before? Do you guys know the difference between the two? What's a complex carb? It takes longer to break down. Yep, it does. Is that good or bad? Depends. For the most part, it's so your your complex. It's like your whole wheat, your grains. Are those bad for you? They're better. They take longer to 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 break down. Your your um your white breads, your your white like your white bagels and all the white rice, all those things. That's a simple carb. So when you're doing simple and complex, your simple it's gonna go away like that. Your complex is gonna kind of taper throughout the day, so that way you um, you're able to use it and it lasts a little longer, so you're able to use it more efficiently. Now, a, a, a complex carb it's more natural, so the body recognizes it a lot better. When you have a simple carb like a white rice or white bread, that is um, it's gone through, it's been processed, so you put chemicals on that to bleach it, that's what you're doing, you know, um, rice is kind of brownish, right, it's a different color, so to get it white, they have to bleach it, it has to go through a process to get it to that color, and so um, the body sometimes doesn't recognize it, so sometimes it doesn't even use it, second, if it does use it, it's a simple, so it's going to go away like that, so as soon as you use it, you're going to go ahead and just uh, use that energy immediately, if you don't use it, goes into the storage pile which is going to go fat cell you, and so that it goes into glycogen it turns into glycogen and the glycogen turns into fats eventually okay so um so that's usually the way that works um so that's one simple concept the other concept is water okay um drinking water is really good because water keeps you full if you drink a lot of water so sometimes that's a good way to regulate sometimes some of the food we eat um, if we like to eat a lot then if we take a lot of water then the water will kind of fill us up and so it won't allow us to eat as much so that's one little rule two we need water it's it, it's, it's essential to our nutrition um, our body is made up of 75 percent water so we need it our brain is 80 percent water our lungs are 75% water. So um, we're made up of water and our organs need water. So do you guys know what the basic number of water an ounce is that we need to have a day? Gallon. Okay, a gallon. It says in here half our body weight. <laughs> half our body weight. A general rule, it's the minimum is usually about 65 ounces. 65 ounces, if you're a little bigger, you weigh a little more, then you might have to consume a little bit more. Um, but a lot of times, okay, well, I drink a lot of water. I ask my, well, how much water do you drink? I ask my patients, because they come in with muscle pain, joint pain, and it's like, dude, if you're not drinking water, they're like, well, I drink about a glass a day. And it's like, <laughs> okay. So one glass for your whole body, for your muscles, your brain, your lungs, and everything else, somebody's gonna be dehydrated. You know what I mean? Somebody's gonna take that hit. So the muscles take a really big hit. So a lot of people have muscle issues, a lot of joint issues. A lot of it is hydration. You have to drink a lot of water to feed that. And so, um, so we always tell people, if you work out, you gotta consume a little bit more, like a gallon, you know, you always see the guys working out at the gym, they have their huge gallon, you know, their, their, their jugs, you know. They're working out, they're sweating, they're losing more water. 
you know, and so if you're an endurance athlete, you got to keep hydrating. Why? Because you're running and you're losing water. So you got to reconsume that. How many of you guys here like coffee? Okay. Do you guys know the ratio of coffee to water? A lot of people don't. It's a diuretic. You lose weight with coffee. I mean, you lose water because um, if you drink a cup of coffee, you're usually going to go to the restroom or pretty quickly right after. And that's why. It's a diuretic. So you are going to lose it. So two to one. And so some people say two to three. So I mean, I'm one to three. So what? For one glass of, for one cup of coffee, you need to be consuming two glasses of water or sometimes even three. A lot of people like to drink four cups of coffee a day, sometimes even more. Um, I know my trainer loves coffee. <laughs> and, then, and then, so I'm like always on him. He's actually cutting back. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's essential. It's, and so we need to make sure that we're drinking enough water. Um, that way we can stay a little healthier. So um, I, again, you know, we can go through this over and over and over and we can talk for hours on different parts of nutrition, just on the carbs, just on the fats and just on the proteins. We can talk forever. Um, but in, in general, for you guys, I really wanted you guys to do this so that you can check and see kind of where you sit. You know, um, and maybe take some of these pointers, use them into your, into your nutrition every day. Prepare for your food. Don't just, you know, you forget and then, um, and then uh, you just have to go in and buy some, you know, fast food or whatever. Processed food doesn't, doesn't process as well. You know, so then it takes a little longer. So that's why it turns into fat. It's a lot, they love to cook with saturated oils. So, uh, saturated fat oil. So then it, it actually, you know, you retain a lot more of that and then that turns into fat. So, um, so uh, I guess I'm going to leave it at that, you know. Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, please feel free. Or what do you want to do? Do you want us to go over there first and then ask questions? Maybe or how do you want to do that? We have some nutrition questions here for a few minutes. Okay. And, and then we'll go over there. Perfect. Yeah. Do any of you guys have any questions at all? Did I cover everything? Oh, I'm awesome. What happens <laughs> yeah. if your protein ratio is higher than your carb and fat ratio? Okay, so pro that's a good question, okay? So your proteins, everywhere you hear, oh, you gotta do your protein, you know? Muscle milk, you know? <laughs> it's like, so, you know, a lot of people love their protein. And a lot of studies show that through the foods that we eat in America, we gain more pro we gain the whole, well, actually we over consume protein. And so, um, so proteins, if they don't denature, if, if they don't break it, if they're not broken down, it goes into the glycogen pile, okay? And then the glycogen is a type of sugar, and then if sugar's not broken down, then it turns into fat. So that's why you see a lot of the guys, uh, the bodybuilders, or some of the guys that like to do heavy weights, they'll take, their, they'll pound their protein all the time, all day long, and then you see them, they just bulk up super huge, you know? Um, if they don't use it, what happens to those guys after they stop working out or after they stop consuming that? They maintain that and it turns into fat, right? That's what it is. So if you over consume your protein, it will eventually turn into fat. And then, um, and then uh, so that's why you got to burn it. So most people, you know, like your, your, uh, your nuts, you know, a lot, even your carbs have some type of protein, your breads, a lot of stuff that we consume has it already you know beans obviously our meats everything else they're packed with protein and so um if we consume more then that can be an issue but sometimes you know depending on what type of workout you're going to do or what type of a sedentary uh, what type of lifestyle you have you might need a little bit more to consume than what we usually take in with regular food you might need to supplement some of that um, maybe post-workout. So post-workout is usually when we consume the fats. Why? Because our insulin receptors and in our muscles pop up. And then the protein loves that because it goes right after it attaches and then it sucks it right into the muscle. And the reason we take protein in is because it helps rebuild muscle. So if you go do a hard workout or a long run or something like that and you work overwork that muscle, you feed a protein and it heals a lot quicker. That's the purpose of protein, and so um, it allows us to build muscle, but at the same time, fix the muscle that we're breaking down when we work out. Because that's what we're doing. When we work out, in order for us to get bigger and gain muscle mass, the muscle tears, and then it has to repair. It tears, 
repairs, tears, repairs, and that tearing and, can, and then rebuilding, that's what allows your muscle to build and that's how you get bigger. And so um, that's why those bodybuilders do it all the time because they're just tearing the heck out of those muscles so they need tons of protein to, re to fix it, but they don't use it all and then it becomes an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a, a good routine for you guys to do. Um, now that you can know how much calories you need to take, now it's time to use them, right? So, um, so for this one, it's a 30 minute workout for the corporate individual. So I, I chose specific exercises, okay? So these exercises are gonna be good to help you with your back, to help you with your neck and your shoulders. Uh, how many of you guys in here sit in a computer? Almost everybody, 99% of you guys sit in a computer. So when we work in a computer, well, let me ask a different question. Uh, another question, how many of you guys have had back neck pain before? About 80%, okay. How many of you guys have had shoulder, like mid shoulder pain before? Okay, so the reason that happens is, um, and maybe this is a different topic that we can talk another day, it's ergonomics. How many of you guys have had an ergonomic assessment for your computer? We definitely need to do that. Okay, so um, an ergonomic assessment in your computer is crucial because you spend most of your day on the computer. All right, so when we do that, where do we sit here? It depends on how you got your thing set up, but you live in this position, in this position right here. So what happens is your shoulder blades start to round forward your neck starts to go forward, and so everything in the front constricts and everything in the back pulls. So it's the rubber band concept. If you take a rubber band, you pull it, you hold it there, what's gonna happen to the rubber band? It's gonna keep getting larger and larger, right? Sometimes it'll just rip. So same thing with muscle. The muscle's not gonna tear, but it is gonna get weak. And so because other muscles will come in to try to um, they'll come in and compensate and they'll recruit other muscle groups to come in to help with that movement. So what happens is the shoulders will touch around forward and the neck will start going here. So your upper trap, there's a muscle underneath the trap called the elevator, will start to get stretched and then that will get weak. That muscle goes into your cervical spine, to your neck, and that's when the neck will start to fatigue and it'll start getting weaker and that's when you start having issues in your back and your neck. Okay, so and that can happen for being a computer for a long time, all right? So some people have already had bad postures. You know, we go home. What do we do at home? We go into our lab. We go into our laptops, or we go into our phones or our iPads, and we live right here. So we do it even more. And so, um, so some of these exercises are going to focus on getting those shoulders back. Okay, I'm probably gonna throw another one in there to get your neck back as well. Cause uh, you guys, depending on how many people there were in here, I'm gonna show that one too. Um, and then for low back, you know, um, how many of you guys, well, core stability. What makes up your core? When people say, oh, I'm working my core today. Wh where do you guys work out? What is that? Your abs, okay. So your abs, so your core, go ahead and face that way for me is actually from here to here, okay? So it's whatever is attaching to the rib cage. So um, if my back does this, what's happening to my low back? It's pushing out, right? If my shoulders come back, my back arches. So the more we're here, the more pressure we're gonna put in our back. And if we're sitting all day and we're here, we're gonna put pressure on our low back. You know, and so then um, w whenever we work core for our lumbar spine for our low back, I always emphasize shoulder blade exercises and mid back exercises because you have to be able to get the right ratio from the shoulder to the low back. You have to strengthen both of them. So I added some exercises in there that are kind of general, okay? I mean, when we do rehab and stuff in our clinic, it's a lot more specific, but this will kind of give you a little bit of a guideline. So when you work out, you're working out with a purpose. You're not just going to see what the heck am I gonna do today, you know? You're actually doing something that's gonna help you, you know, with some issues that might come along with some of the things that you do on a regular basis. Okay, so um, that's what I chose on there. So what we'll do is we'll go through these. Um, some of them you guys have already seen. For example, your rows. 
Sounds very simple, but a rose has different motions. You have to do it different ways. So we're gonna use this machine right here. So it's kind of, you guys are lucky, man. You guys have an awesome gym. Use it. So generally for, for a row, you want to be belly button. It's probably a little high. I'm kind of short here. <laughs> so we'll go, I think that's number 10 there. There we go. So for a row, let's we'll do that light here. So we want to go thumbs in. Always have a little bit of tension. Thumbs in this way. What you want to do with the rows is you, as you start coming back and pulling, you need to start squeezing your shoulder blades. Most of the time when we do rows, we just do this, right? You got to break it down. Internal rotation, bring the thumbs in, that locks it in. Then as you bring it, as you go back, you start pulling out. Then you start squeezing your shoulders. Squeeze and hold for about a second and slowly bring it back into internal rotation. Once you're there, let it go for a little bit so you get that extra stretch and then come back and then do it again. So that's a row. If you're not adding the internal rotation, you're missing half of that exercise. So that's the general rule. Getting there and getting that to squeeze will really get that shoulder back, okay? So that's the rows. Shoulder extensions, um, there's one 120 degrees, one at 90, they do different muscle groups. So at 120, we're gonna lift this up. So we'll go to, we'll go there. It's a little low, but kind of short here. And so then what you're gonna do here is you're gonna have, you wanna have your arms up at 45, so this actually works pretty good. If you're taller, you can go on your knees and do it on your knees, should be fine. Um, when you're there, what you wanna do is, again, thumbs in. On this one, you're gonna keep them in, and then you're gonna bring it down and go past your midline, okay? And then bring it back slowly. If you 12 reps, it's enough of all these exercises. But when you're bringing it, when you're contracting the muscle, it's okay to go a little slow, a little faster. When you come back up, is you want to go a little slower. That's when you build. We call it concentric and eccentric load. A concentric load is when you pull the muscle and you contract it. Eccentric load is when it's stretching as it's coming back. So when you build muscle, it's in the eccentric load phase, not in the concentric. So if you're wanting to get bigger, if you do a bicep curl, you go up, hold, pick it up, and then slowly count to about five and bring it down. And that will just pop up your bicep because that's where, how you're gonna get bigger. And so, um, so then you'll do that one at 120. The 90 is actually awesome for computer work because it's getting your serratus anterior muscle that's the muscle in front of your shoulder blade that's the one that keeps it sucked into your shoulder so that way you're not rounding forward too much it holds it back so that one you're going to go about 90 degrees so probably a little lower right there 12 okay and then you're going to go here and you're going to pull straight back and then hold and then slowly bring it back. So always go past your midline, okay? That's how you, if you go, if you stop here, you're not gonna fire it. It's gotta go past that way. And I always keep my hands straight, because a lot of times if we do it this way, we'll try to curl, and now you're gonna get forearm. If you hold it flat, you're really gonna isolate the muscle itself. So that way you're not engaging a lot of forearm workouts. The touchdown, the bird touchdowns, uh, that one we'll do on the ball. So if you can do them on the ball, if it's too wobbly, then, uh, then we'll do them. You can do them, actually, you can do it on a bench. You guys have a bench over there, so you can do it there. But the purpose of this is to work your middle trap and your lower trap. So the middle trap is a muscle that will keep your shoulder blades in, and then the lower trap is what's gonna keep it down. So we can get it to start doing this and this, so it comes up. So if you guys that love to work out, if you're just doing bench presses to get your chest bigger, you're just gonna make them look rounder. If you really wanna get the nice pec that kinda comes out to the side, 
you need to do these because that's what's gonna open up your shoulders. You actually, if you don't work out your back, then you're gonna keep rounding, rounding. So this one will make it so it looks nice and wide over here to the side. Um, so then on this one, you're gonna go face down. You're gonna put your arms on the side here. You're gonna squeeze your shoulders. And Mike can probably tell you how, if you do it wrong, <laughs> then uh, at first, he's doing awesome now. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> not to throw you under the bus or anything. But um, so what, what you want to look out for is, because when you guys are so upper trap dominant, because you're in a computer all day, you want to shut that down. So what you all see you guys yourselves doing is actually doing this and squeezing because you're using that you want to shut that down so it's only getting the middle then you're going to bring your elbows up and bring your arms back and then back down to the middle and then relax so that shuts off the whole exercise so there's steps here pinch don't shrug just pinch there elbows up so they're at 90 and back this way you want to avoid doing this and this it's here here there and back down okay so and you'll feel that mid back fire i mean i actually feel it right now so it, it works awesome so those are the touchdowns tricep extensions i mean a lot of you guys know what a tricep is you know so if you think a truck yeah go ahead with all of these one set 12 reps you should be good if you really want to build up the back a little more and get the shoulders back i would maybe add another set in there you know but keep the 12 reps that should be fine um yeah uh for the tricep extensions so for triceps um so a tricep you're here you'll pull well you usually do it like this right go down this way so that gets the middle tricep so try three so there's three triceps you need to work so the first one you can do this one which gets the middle one if you want to get the inside tricep you stand on your side and then you bring it down that gets the inside tricep and then to get the outside tricep you do this one and so there's three of them uh, also you can do the in, the intermediate one you can get it the, the one you do this way you can also do it this way so you're doing a reverse so you're actually getting the middle one right here so that way you can actually see all three triceps on the side so that's a good one uh, bicep curls or bicep curls you know obviously bringing them down um, there's there's it's a by so what does that mean there's two of them you have the long head and then the short head bicep so if you do the regular bicep curls with a W I don't know if you guys have a bar here but um, but you have those there so um, for a regular bicep curl so then if you're gonna get the regular one you just gonna go here and you're gonna go straight up this way you also want to go lower so you actually extend it back to get to get the uh, short head, you can go here and actually go out. So in, out that way, and that gets the short head of the bicep. So you have to add that rotation to get to it. So those are the two ones that you want to get. Um, and lateral pull downs, that's just again to get those shoulders. Um, you guys have the pull down here. So for the lats, for the lat pull downs, the biggest thing, never go into your, never bring the lat pull, the bar behind your neck, okay? That's gonna put more force on your neck. So you see, you'll see a lot of people kind of bringing it down and doing this. That's horrible for your neck. Go here, bring it. You don't wanna lift or swing to get that. You should be able to, and this one is actually kind of further forward. So I would have to pull this forward here it's kind of big for me here but so you'll grab it you can stand up sit down with it put your feet underneath lock yourself in and it's bringing your shoulders think of bringing your hands towards your towards your back pockets so you'll be here there hold and slowly bring it back up so you're not moving your back at all. All you're doing is pulling down. So it's a lat pull down. It's not a 
pull swing or anything like that. So if you have to lower the weight, lower the weight. But that way you really get that pinch and work on that back, on the lat there. Um, so for the lower back, ex lower extremities, your hamstring curls. So um, there's a couple ones you can do. Uh, one of them is you're gonna go here. You're gonna put the, your feet on the ball, dig in with your heel to activate your, your hamstring and pull towards your butt. Then extend out this way and that really fires your hamstring or you can use a band. You guys don't have any of those bands here, I don't think, but. What's that? Oh, you have the machines there, yeah. There's those, yeah, but it's a different one. It's the really large ones. They're loops that are like this big. They're awesome. And those are good for like your squats too. Um, but, uh, or you can use your machine. That works just as good. I mean, you have them, use them. You know, um, th those are great. Uh, this would be a second set. Uh, anytime you use the ball, it's for stability, so it'll work your core a little bit better if you use the if you use the ball because you have to balance. Squats, you guys have the dumbbells there, so you could probably do a sumo squat, toes out, come on down, lift up. You want to avoid your knees going forward, past your toes, or bringing your your back down. So the general rule in a squat. Or even if you're working out there and you guys are lifting some of your equipment, you know, the general rule is keeping your eyes up at 45 degrees, throw your butt back, and then go down. And that kind of keeps your knees behind your, your toes. It keeps the arch in your back. And then you keep your, your eyesight up and bring the weight close to you. That helps. So you're not doing, if you look down at picking something up, you're already arching your back and that's gonna be an issue. So you gotta trust yourself, you know, get down, grab it, here and back. Same thing when you do workouts. Here, grab, lift, and that's a good, a good squat. And so work on that, because that really helps work out the glutes. We do a lot of those things on a daily basis. So learning to do squats is a really good exercise for you guys. Um, planks, uh, planks, um, for the planks, there's two of them, right? You have the general plank where you're here, put the forearms down, you look up, you wanna keep, once you're up in that position, the general rule, once you get down, you wanna bring your belly button in towards your spine. So you actually activate, it's called thoracic, your uh, transverse abdominus muscle, which is one of your main core stability muscles. So you'll go here, there, belly button in, look up, and then hold that for ideally a minute and you can do multiple sets if you're shaking and your butt's dropping just relax and then do, and then just kind of pick it back up again do it right so um pelvic bridging so the pelvic bridging is um so for that you're basically gonna lay down this is really good at engaging your course to your core as well um, again all of these have steps so you're gonna go here bend your knees you're gonna bring your belly button in towards your spine. Then you're gonna bring your butt up, down, relax. If you wanna make it a little harder, bring the belly button in, up, lift your leg, make sure it's not dropping, down, down, shut it down. So then you can do another one where you put a ball in between your knees, squeeze, lift and this as you're holding onto the ball and now you start engaging a lot more of, of that group so there's a lot of different ways you can do that exercise uh ceiling kicks you're gonna go down on the ball face down easy one putting your hands here on the floor bringing your foot up flattening it and bringing the heel to the ceiling this way that works your glute max and a little bit of your low back musculature there. If you wanna make it a little harder, hold on to the ball, up, down. And this one has a, both of them, so it's a little harder. And go up. That's way too hard on that thing. So you basically do it here, hold on, there, here, up, back down, up, back down. Now you don't have a, a solid surface. 
and it intensifies the exercise like by three times. It's hard. Um, oh, the Supermans, I didn't, I didn't show you guys those up, up top. So the Supermans are the same with the ball. You're here, easy one, put your hands down, here, down, over, down. If you wanna make it harder, hold on to the ball, up, over, down. So it makes it a lot harder. Then the ball will start to shift, but you have to keep it close to you so you can gauge that core, that core as well. Uh, calf raises, or you can, do you guys have a machine for calves in here or no? Oh yeah, but that's more for like, that's for your four way. So for this one, you'll kind of, you'll put it on your foot. So you'll put a, that one there, then you'll strap it through your ankle here, like this, put it through the ring. So then the, the four way is you're here, back, you want to avoid doing that. Your torso stays up, the only thing that's moving is your leg, that way. There's there, in. And you kind of want to step off a little bit. In, right there. So you always keep that tension. In, tension. And then the back. Then you go here, hold, flexion, this way. And then for abduction, here, out this way. So that gets all your hip muscles. And that's what this little tool is for. And has anybody come in and showed you guys like how to use all the equipment at all? Okay. Um, so yeah, so you guys have a lot of good equipment. Use it. There's a lot of stuff in here. So it's all, you guys have a really good gym. And so um, compared to some of the places that we've gone, I mean, I'm, it's like night and day difference. You guys are lucky. So yeah, I would definitely, so, and then the calf raises, get a, get a dumbbell. You can hold on to it. You guys don't have like a board here but um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to do them here. You can just grab them, grab them and just go up into your toes, come back down, up, down. Ideally, you want to have some kind of a board that you can stand on and you can go and then the ankle should drop past that line so that way you really stretch it. Because when you're here and you go up and you go down, it just shuts it down, it's not, you don't get the full the full uh, stretch of that muscle. So, um, so those are some of the most basic exercises that I think will be good for you guys. You can come in, knock those out, you know. Um, should take about 30 minutes, maybe at first it might take a little longer, but once you start getting used to it, um, it should be a little quicker, 25 or 30 minutes. And uh, I recommend doing these two or three times a week. Uh, you should be working out anyways, you know, as part, of, as part of life, you know, we need to do that to maintain our body stronger. Um, you guys sit at a desk all day, so it's, you know, it's part of, part of life, you know, it's part of your work. So you have to take care of your body. In my, in my line of work, I'm always bending, twisting, and all these different movements. My back, it probably hurts more than any of you guys, you know, just because of my job, you know. And so, but, but twice, two to three times a week, I'm doing all these exercises. So, you know, I do them, I do them as well. That's what keeps my back healthy. You know, it does hurt every once in a while, but if I do these consistently, it really, really helps. And so you just gotta take time and that's just it. You know, taking time away from your day to give yourself, give yourself, um, basically taking care of yourself. There's a saying, you know, that the body takes care of us for the first 30 years. After the next, thir after 30, is you gotta take care of your body. You know, um, and that is through nutrition, through exercise, and then um, just general maintenance, you know what I mean? Like, uh, not letting things get too crazy. Obviously, I'm a chiropractor, you know what I mean? So, uh, that's what I see all day. Most people that come into my office don't come in because they got hit and then they got injured. They, came, they come in because like, I was bending over picking my son up or picking something off the floor and my back went out and I couldn't stand up and I was there for like two minutes. Very little things. Why did my back go out? They don't understand that there's two types of trauma, repetitive micro trauma and macro trauma. Macro trauma is when you get hit, car accident, obviously that's what injured it. 
repetitive microtrauma is what you do on a daily basis that adds up and then the body cannot handle it anymore and that's what most people come into the office with and so if you know um obviously coming in doing your regular i know a lot of people in here come in for the regular massage or the chiro visit you know that's always good just to kind of help maintain the body kind of where it needs to be you know you guys the job is physical you're sitting all day your head is forward you're running forward so that takes you takes a hit through the body you know and so don't wait till it's too late you know we're there to help you guys or even if it's just a consult you know whatever we don't charge for that just come on in you guys have amazing insurance too except we're working on a certain thing with Primera but but um, but uh, but other than that you know your insurance covers almost everything okay it covers pretty much everything even massage too it does cover it but um, so utilize it you know use it come on in for an evo don't wait till it's too late and then um, hopefully hopefully um, the presentation was informative um, I love doing the hands-on just so you guys can visualize things I'm a visual person that's how I learn and so that's how I teach and so hopefully you guys learned something and if you have any other questions please feel free to call me please feel free to ask me or email me he has my email address you know um, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have um, we're still